What is up, NFC West football fans? And welcome into another edition of the NFC West Roundtable powered by BetUS Week 6. It's in the books, and we turn the page tonight to Week 7. Man, that sounds weird to say, but we're already heading in to Week 7 as we try to continue down this road of figuring out how the NFC West is going to unfold. We have four games within the division this weekend, and we're going to break all four of them down with your four favorite members of the NFC West, starting with Jake, going to Mike, going to Brandon, going to Jesse. Fellas, let's dive into it. we got a full slate this upcoming week of great games. We'll start in the 1 o'clock window, and we'll take a look right now at the lines on BetUS. By the way, all of the lines for the Week 7 matchups are all up currently on BetUS, and we'll take a look at all of them throughout each game here. Let's start in the 1 p.m. window or 10 a.m. window, as it would be for Brandon out on the West Coast. The Seahawks on the road to the Atlanta Falcons. They're coming off a three-game losing streak, are the Seattle Seahawks. They're three-point dogs on the road against Atlanta with an over-under of 51. By the way, all these lines that are up on BetUS can be taken advantage of with the 150% sign-up bonus up to 2000 bucks on your first deposit. Just use the promo code YouTube150. That'll also get you 125% bonus on your next two deposits after that. So Seahawks are a three-point road dog uh, against the Atlanta Falcons in Week 7. I'm going to start with Jake here. Jake. Seahawks start at three and oh blank. They're three and three. Can they get back on track against Kirk cousins and the Falcons? No, they cannot. Uh, that is not a team I want to play, especially not in their environment. Kirk cousins is slinging the ball all over the place. I think the defense is opportunistic. They're starting to run the football. Um, just been really impressed with the receiving ability of Drake London. I think his maturation has really taken off and I just think it's a horrible matchup and the exact opposite of what you would want coming off that 49ers loss. The good news for Seattle, they do have that mini buy. I just don't think it's going to matter in the long run. Ultimately, final score, are you thinking easy one for the Falcons or Seahawks kind of keep it tight? Well, I think Geno's going to be throwing it everywhere because that's, I mean, that's what all he's been doing. Uh, they've been leaning on him. So I'm going to say it's probably like 30 to 20, like late score at the end, uh, you know, Seahawks. I, I think the Falcons are just right now. I, I don't really want to play the Falcons, to be honest yeah. with you. I think they're a really good football team. I hear you. And their record can reflect that after this past or this upcoming week. They win. They'll improve to five and two. And they'll really be vying for one of the top spots in the NFC. So, Jesse, with that said, who gets it done this week in Atlanta or Seattle? Yeah, I, I got to agree. Atlanta, they uh, <laughs> Kirk Cousins has hit his groove. The offensive line is good there. Uh, the whole offense, I mean, they, they've really made things work. Those young players that a lot of people were casting off is no good. It's crazy what a decent quarterback can come in and do, and all of a sudden everybody thinks that these players are good. I think the defense is pretty well put together. I got to go Atlanta, 27-24. Mike, how are you feeling? What are your thoughts on this one? Are you still the Nostradamus of the room, by the way? No. I I <laughs> he was, though. I was getting the um, road order and everything, man. Yeah, no, I lost I lost the juju. Um, so for this <laughs> game here, um, I think yeah, I, I wanna, you know, just see Brando over there all very sad, but no, I agree with the fellas <laughs> here, man. I I think that Atlanta is gonna be a good team. And it's so crazy too, because if you look at the the South, like they're kind of very sneaky. A lot of us always, you know, focus on the West, but they, they got some really good teams with, with Tampa and then Atlanta over there. I just think that they're gonna continue to stack up wins. That team does look really good. Man, Kirk Cousins, do you like that? It's just amazing. I think he's gonna do a really good job against the Seattle Seahawks, but you guys are all still struggling with a lot of uh um, injuries over there, and they're going to take advantage of what they got going on. Kyle Pitts, uh, London, and then John Robinson, uh, very, very good weapons over there. So I do say 31 to 17 uh, Falcons. Brandon, talk to me. How does this one go down with your Seahawks? I wish I was more optimistic here than my cohorts, but uh, I cannot be. You've got to earn the right for optimism. You can't just be blindly optimistic when you're trying to analyze what's going down. And uh, these are two of the teams that are some of the worst in the NFL at stopping the run on either side of the ball. So it does come down to a little bit similar to last week on the Niner game where you go, hey, the team that ends up running for more yards, the team's going to win this game. I, even though you do have a Geno and you do have a Kirk Cousins slinging it all over the place, I think that that team that ends up in that state ends up coming away with the win. 
But unfortunately, there's just too many bad things right now with the Seahawks team, especially defensively. You don't tackle well. You don't rush the passer. You don't stop the run. You don't force any turnovers. You don't get off the football field. It's really hard to win, especially when you're going up a very against a very capable offense to hope that you can carry that day in that way. So I think it's going to be a loss. I'd go 27-20 right now. We get Tariq Woolen back. We get Byron Murphy back. That helps. We're a little more competitive. But they've got a long way to go right now to get them back to where they were at the start of this year. Two NFC West games in the 4 p.m. window. We'll start with the 405 game. Rams coming off the bye. And by the way, fellas, there's some big spreads this weekend. The Bills, nine and a half point favorite over the Titans. The Commanders, a nine point favorite over the Panthers. And Jesse, I don't know if this is a testament to maybe some respect for the Rams coming off the bye, or this just goes to show how truly god awful the, the Raiders are right now, especially after dealing Devontae Adams. The, the Rams are a seven point favorite coming off the bye despite the injuries against the Raiders. We talked on the previous episode earlier in the week how Jesse basically said the season is contingent on this. This is such a must win game and such a winnable game that if they don't end up winning it, Jesse said that he was going to do something with bleach. I'll leave it up to your imagination. That's what <laughs> the game comes down to. So, Jesse, I'll start with you. Is Jake going to avoid the bleach? Can the Rams get it done against the lowly Raiders this upcoming weekend? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's interesting. You know, the the show took a, a crazy turn with all the super chats, and we appreciate and love all the support. Thank you for everybody that tunes in. But I really wanted to talk about the Rams down the stretch, and Jake kind of went through the schedule. To me, the, the Rams are either going to finish the season 8-4, and four, and that includes a loss to the 49ers, and they're going to fall just short of the playoffs because of it, or they're going to finish the season 9-3, and three, win the division, and make the playoffs. I really see that for their schedule. It sounds crazy now when you're looking at a 1-4 and four team, but you look at how that schedule shapes up, and you look at the players that they're going to be getting back. Now, obviously, if all those guys get injured again, then everything's off the table. But assuming relatively good health, I really think that that's what we're looking at. I think the Rams team is very talented. One and four is just a really tough start. But ultimately, I think they're probably 10 points at least better than the Raiders. I'll, I'll take that money line for sure. Uh, and I'll go 34 to 20 Rams. Brandon, how do you see it going down? Yeah, get right game here for the Raiders uh, with the two with the offense where it's at, Devontae Adams trade and all that. So uh, I think that if on the Rams, just try to run the ball and stick to the plan of what you built this offseason and what you're hoping to get. You get no boom back in this game, so a little bit better on the offensive line. Maybe get Blake Quorum integrated in, but I think that they run away in this game. It's an easy one at that. They finally get an opportunity to really step on a team, I think, for the first time as much this season, and they they will do that. So I, I'd go like 31-10, something like that, 31-13. A couple of blowouts predicted thus far. Mike, you making it a third? Yes, yes. As as, as much I would love to see Jake, you know, drown in the water in the NFC West. <laughs> I I gotta get the, the Raiders are just not. They're not a good team. There's so many different things going on over there. At 31 10 is actually my prediction. I, I think the, the Rams are going to run away with it. They, they have a lot to prove. There's a lot of you know outside noise about the one and four Rams, but I do agree that down the stretch, especially with the NFC West and where they're at currently right now with the division leader at three and three, like everything's still open. And I think this is the step in the right direction for them to take care of business and do it in a really good fashion. And 31 to 10 is a good step in the right direction. So I do have the Rams winning. The ultimate goal here, Jake, is to step in the right direction, right? You got to get through the first step. And this seems to be the easiest one that you could possibly have in order uh, to come off of a bye and get on the right track. So how do you see it going down? Well, I see it going down, you know, very well for the Rams. I think this is going to be their most complete win of the year. I think they're going to win in all three phases, the special teams included, uh, which has been underrated, but you know, that's what happens when you're one and four. Um, I think the defense is going to make personnel adjustments. We're going to see new linebacker or two, uh, which I think a lot of Rams fans are ready for. The secondary is going to look like it did last week. I think that was the best iteration of the Rams defense we've seen all year. And then I think when you look at the offense, the greatest thing that we found out was Jordan Whittington, who looked like he had a serious shoulder injury, left the game against the Packers. Sean McVay immediately came out and said, he's not going to miss any time. Matthew Stafford back, you know, his, his little soreness. That's nothing for Stafford. You saw him on the Fox broadcast uh, or, you know, the Fox, whatever, post game or pregame show. Uh, Stafford's ready to go. So, those bumps and bruises, they're going to happen, but the Rams are slowly but surely starting to get healthier. And it's been the way that they've lost games that I think is almost encouraging. I, I understand we we look at it as, yeah, you have to be able to score in the red zone. Totally understand that. But you can't just, you know, scoff at the idea that, you know, this team is 
literally living in the red zone. I, all of their drives are, most of their drives are very uh, well put together. When you're going up a te- against a team like the Raiders, who are in turmoil, we've seen these teams in the past. Uh, the Browns, I would say, are one of those teams right now as well. Um, the Raiders, they had that weird win where it's kind of like any given Sunday. They go into Baltimore week two, and they win 26 to 23. After that, they lose to Andy Dalton and the Panthers, and they just kind of, you know, they beat the Browns, right? But the last two weeks, they've lost 34 to 18 to the Broncos, okay? Broncos have a great defense. No one's going to say they don't. But Bo Nix, I'm not a Bo Nix believer at all. And that offense just gave them fits. And the Steelers, we all know the Steelers have an elite defense, but the Steelers can't score. Uh, And they scored 32. So I think this is an awful matchup for the Raiders. I think the Rams are a lot better than both of those teams. I just listed the Steelers and Broncos. They don't have an elite defense, but I think this is a little bit of a breather for them. The defense has struggled a bit, but also not give enough credit for what they do at the end of games, getting big stops when needed. They had to have a couple of them against the 49ers as well, which isn't talked about. So I think in this one, guys, I'm going to go with 34, 13, I think it's fair. I be, I'm going to say that, like, I know people are going to say, oh, the Raiders are trash. How are you giving them points? Well, it's the NFL. They'll find a way yeah. to score. The Rams also have issues on the defense. I'm not ignorant to the fact that they don't. Um, but I think whoever starts, whether it's Minshew or Aiden O'Connell, I don't really care because the Raiders can't stop the run. The Raiders can't stop. They see the Rams struggle to score in the red zone. Raiders can't stop teams in the red zone. So this is a perfect team to face you know, we always hear it all the time, and it's, at this point, so cliche and corny, but get right game, there's never been more of a get right game ever for the Rams. You come off a bye, you're getting healthier, you might have Cooper Cup back this week. Honestly, guys, if Cooper Cup doesn't play, he can play. It's them saying they're that confident they're going to beat the Raiders without him. Ooh, baby, let's go 20 minutes down the line from that game to the game of the day. Super Bowl rematch from a year ago. The Chiefs on the road to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. The Niners, 3-3, three and three are a one-point favorite against the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs. I cannot wait for this game. By far the best game of the day, and... It, once again, it gives the Chiefs an opportunity to lose, and they just never seem to take advantage of that opportunity. They do the opposite. The opportunity I wanted to take advantage of, they don't. They win every single week somehow, some way. The question is, do they find a way to win this week? Mike, I'll start with you. Chiefs, Niners, Super Bowl rematch. It's in San Fran. Who gets it done? I'm judging by the way that that Jesse looks right now. It doesn't look very positive, but I, I, I'm going to lean on the fact of the six and zero Chiefs. Honestly, and like and here's the thing too. Like, and I'm not. This is no disrespect to obviously the 49ers and what they've done with obviously the top of the division. But we're talking about Patrick Mahomes. I'm never, ever. I, I've learned my lesson before, and and send, saying, oh, he's not going to win. Patrick Mahomes, as long as he's the quarterback over there, I'm not going to count him out. Um, no, you guys got a good defense, and you got some weapons over there. But man, Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. He's going to find a way, regardless if it's on one leg or not. He's going to find a way i do have the chiefs winning this game um and it's not going to be a blowout so don't don't be sad about that i think this is going to be a very close game very very fun probably one of the best matchups in the nfc west amongst these games going on so i say 27 24 chiefs end up winning it with a field goal Hmm. brandon what do you think happens in the game of the day uh jesse just check where's mason at health wise uh he practiced today so i believe he's gonna play Okay. I think it's a big difference. I like Garendo, but I don't want to go Garendo 24 seven against this chief team. It's such a close game between these teams. We saw that in the super bowl where it came down to really a couple of key plays because everything was so tight and even up. I think the Niners getting a chance to play this at home. If Mason's able to run and he's really in a place where they're not giving him five carries and he's just like, ow, ow. And that you can actually lean on him a bit in this game. Then, uh, I, I actually like the Niners' chances playing at home here. I've I've liked how they played. Remember, Jesse, I was talking about this even when you guys were in that midst where I thought you were in all of those games. I thought it was more coming together, just not quite pushing it past the finish line in some of these games. And I think that they are coming together at the right time here. So I, I think the Chiefs are primed to lose. If you are down in the fourth quarter to within one score of the Chiefs, you know you don't like to be there because let's just face it, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And you guys know what I'm talking about, like, Call's going to probably go in their favor down the stretch. You want to probably elongate it out if you can. But with that said, I think I like Mike's um, look at this. I I think I'd see it something like a 24-21 type game. Niners, I'll give them the nod in this one. Jake, what are your thoughts? 
It's, you know, this is a tough one because I think, you know, the normies out there will say, oh, well, I'll never, you know, Patrick Mahomes is going to win this. It's not even going to be close. Well, I'm going to say this right now, Brandon, in, in your case, Geno Smith has played better than Patrick Mahomes this year. A lot of people don't want to admit it, uh, but he has. I, I, mm. It's time to have a legitimate conversation here about Patrick Mahomes. He has not played well this year. He And I understand why he's had injuries at wide receiver. It happens, right? It, it does. But like, he's also, and yeah, and it, Kelsey's yeah. not the same player, no matter how many times he says, no, I'm totally fine. It's a no, you're, you're not. And the running backs, you know, the injury to um, Pacheco, right? But the defense has been really good. And I think yeah. Brock Purdy has done a nice job of kind of mitigating better defenses. Now, I understand people look at, you know, Minnesota. They gave him some tough looks. I know Spagnola will. He's seen Spagnolo before. So that's like the benefit there. Whereas Brian Flores was kind of a rug pull, right? What they threw at him. I think this is going to be a close game. I just want to, you know, read off this because I I meant to do it last time to give Geno some credit here. So Geno Smith, uh, according to PFF, has nine big time throws and seven turnover worthy plays, right? The nine is tied for uh, seventh in the league. Okay. Patrick Mahomes. And they both have six interceptions, six touchdowns, right? Patrick mm-hmm. Mahomes has five big time throws and seven turnover worthy plays. Now understand this. PFF is not the Bible. It is subjective, but that's what I've seen. I've seen a quarterback that has not played his best football. So is he going to play his best football on the road in San Francisco? I don't think so, but I think the defense is going to get a couple stops down the stretch And I think they're going to eke this one out in a 24-20 ugly win. One thing to note, the Chiefs are coming off a bye. Andy Reid, 21-4 and in his career off of the bye. Jesse, Mm. let me know how it goes down this upcoming Sunday. Well, 49er fans should be happy to know that Alex Kemp will be officiating this game. And Alex Kemp (laughs) has officiated three... 49er playoff wins in the last three years. So that's a good that's a good news. He's also very, very quick when it comes to calling offensive holdings. So 49er fans, no Bill Vinovich. We should be good to go as far as oh, the officiating goes. Bad. No Bosa chokeholds? Yeah, no Bosa <laughs> chokeholds. I know that's that's a real like these are real conversations that 49er fans are having. So it sh- it shouldn't come down to that. But Listen, I'm I'm hearing all the things that you're saying about Mahomes and how depleted the Chiefs are. And this this was supposed to be this way in the Super Bowl. The 49ers weren't supposed to lose that game. They were the supremely talented team. Patrick Mahomes wasn't Patrick Mahomes. The offense wasn't the offense. If there was any year to get the Kansas City Chiefs, this was the year. Until the 49ers do it, I, I can't I can't believe it. They're they're four and against Shanahan. Um, they've now, they just beat Brock Purdy, obviously. Um, you talk about Brian Flores. Well, Flores did face the 49ers last year, and the excuse was Brock Purdy threw interceptions because he was concussed. Well, what happened this year when he placed or faced Flores? He was flummoxed again. So, I listen, I, I just, until until I see it, I got to see it to believe it. I've written the Chiefs off way too many times already. The 49ers should have beaten them in both Super Bowls. There's something about the Chiefs. They just got the 49ers number. So I'm going to go 24-23 Kansas City Chiefs. They got everybody's number, buddy. Do not worry about it. It's not just your Niners. These freaking Chiefs. They got everybody (laughs) wondering how the hell they do it. They somehow do it. I'll be pulling for your Niners on Sunday. All right. Let's go to Monday night. A double double header. This is a weird one, though. 9 p.m. <laughs> kickoff. I don't think they've ever done this before. It's a 9 p.m. kickoff. It's in Arizona. The Chargers on the road with maybe a healthy Jim Harbaugh. There was some question about what the hell happened there. He came out with a change of pants. I don't know what went down on <laughs> with the Chargers there. But he's, he's heading out to Arizona to take on the Cardinals on Monday night. <laughs> oh, Her palpitations through his bed. Yeah, I don't know. that was an odd one. I don't know what. I didn't. Quite what? understand what the heck happened there. Yeah, did you see that when he came back? He 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 had a completely different pair of pants on. When he came back to coach. <laughs> <laughs> so the speculation, and I was like, oh my god, it had nothing. I don't. I'm like, oh, I, I don't and know. He was wearing white pants before. Yeah, I don't know what the <laughs> heck happened there. But I think he's all right. 
<laughs> his Chargers are a three-point uh, favorite on Monday Night Football against the Cardinals. The Cardinals looking to get back on track after getting worked by the Green Bay Packers this past week. Jake, I'll start with you. Chargers or the Cardinals on Monday Night Football? Who do you got? I got the Cardinals. I, I think this is another get-right game uh, that we talked about. You know, the Rams have that with the Raiders. Um, I think, I don't know what it is with the AFC West dunking on them, but I think that the Cardinals have the get right game. It's right in their face. The Rams are at home. The Cardinals are at home. And I understand the Cardinals are one and two at home, but I've seen the Cardinals best football played at home. And I think that the chargers are kind of one of those teams that you see it. They just kind of get through their three and two. They don't really, they're just kind of there. Like no one looks at the chargers are like, yeah, that's a contender right now. Justin Herbert's not playing inspiring football for whatever reason. They trade away Keenan Allen before the season to hurt their, uh, you know, offensive uh, production. JK Dobbins has been like kind of the big thing there. I think has been, you know, really good for them, but I just think that the Cardinals are the better team and I don't know how they're going to be able to stop Kyler Murray because I'll tell you right now, if the Cardinals were coming off an inspiring win on the road against the Packers, they'd be prime for a letdown in prime time. They absolutely would. But I just don't see it. When you get the crap kicked out of you like that, and you're a talented football team that should probably have more wins than you do, I'm not taking the Chargers. Uh, the Chargers have beaten the Raiders, Panthers, and Broncos as their three wins. This is what we talk about, where not everybody plays a one-size-fits-all schedule. And so you end up with teams that are three and two because yeah, you play what's on your schedule, but like early on in the season, I mean, you get to play two of the worst teams in the league. You played the Panthers before they switched to Andy Dalton. So that was like the worst Panthers team you could have possibly played. So yeah, I'm not high on the chargers. I'm going to take the Cardinals here. Uh, and I think they score a lot. I I'm going to say they they score 33 and I'm going to say the chargers kind of been hovering around that 17 to 20, I'll, I'll give him 17 points. So 33, 17. I think the Cardinals blow out the chargers in prime time. So quite literally the absolute reverse of what last week was almost to the exact point total the, against the Packers. That's what you got this upcoming week. Interesting. Jesse, how do you see this game going down? I, I don't see it like that at all. I listen, I, I've, I have watched the team in the San Francisco 49ers be coached by Harbaugh and Greg Roman. I know exactly what they're trying to do and it works. Um, they have a recipe for success. Yeah. They, they are three wins are not against great teams. However, they were also very, very close with the chiefs and very close with the Pittsburgh Steelers as well. And both of those were when Herbert had a high ankle sprain. I don't even know why he was playing in those games, but he was, um, the, I, I just don't see a path for them to be able to score 33 points because the Chargers will probably have the ball for 40 minutes of boring three yards and a cloud of dust football. And they'll I'm win so sorry, 20 Mike. to 17 because this is just what they do. I mean, this is the brand of football they want to play. And that's the brand of football they will be able to play in this game. I'm going to go 2017 Chargers. Brandon, what do you think? Pretty aligned along where Jesse is on this one. I've Harbo was the guy that I wanted in this offseason for my Seahawks as a number one target. Uh, just as far as I thought it would also be just funny for the Niner rivalry. But I liked him a lot as a coach because I trust, like Jesse talked about him, his ability to uh, come in and do what he does. Everywhere that guy goes, he wins. And he has a, a style that people don't like because it ain't fancy and it ain't going to you know make fans fall over themselves from an offensive performance standpoint, but it wins ball games. And that defense is playing well. Big part of this is contingent on Bosa coming back this year. I think they need his help for that defense to run right with Mac on the other side. But I just think that it's going to be tough slaying for the Cardinals because they're going to deal with the same kind of game plan that the Lions unveiled on them. And fortunately, when you go after this Cardinal team and you have the means to go downhill against them in the run game, I should know you can do it against my team right now as well. There's not a whole hell of a lot you can do to stop them. And they're going to stay committed to it. They're not going to leave that running a game. And I just think that they'll control the clock and keep Kyler off the field. I think 2017 is probably right around where I'd be on the same point as far as the score goes. Mike, let's hear it, baby. You're rounding out week seven for us. You're rounding out the show here. What ends up happening? 
just want to say thank you, Jake, for giving me a little hope. Uh, no, but, but, but I see <laughs> you gave a lot of hope, by the way. Jake thinks yeah, you got to roll. I know, but it kind of went away with, with my guys down here. But no, I, I, I agree <laughs> with, with my guys down here, honestly. Like, the, the, the thing is that obviously when it when it comes down to this Arizona Cardinal offense, it's been a, a big struggle in terms of being consistent. We're, we're just not consistent. And, and and I think that, you know, keeping Kyler Murray on the field, you know, that's that's a good thing. But also, too, like the Arizona Cardinals offense is going to do a job in doing that because we've just been seeing three and out, three and out, three and out. And it's just it's very frustrating. Um, I do think that this defense over there, especially if they do get Bosa back, can be very, very a scary situation for the Arizona Cardinals offense because we have been struggling a lot with the uh, right side of the field or the right side of the line, just an absolute turnstile when it comes down to it. I would love to be optimistic about my Arizona Cardinals. I really would, but we are now kind of the point of the season where we kind of know what this Cardinal team is and also don't know what this Cardinal team is. So I'm going to lean on the fact that, yeah, I, I do agree that – couple big things that the Cardinals still haven't yet to address. We can't stop the run to save our life, and we cannot cause pressure to the opposing quarterback. And I think those are going to be the downfall of the Arizona Cardinals. Although we might score points, might not be a lot. I don't think it's going to be enough to uh, to, to to get the win here. So I do think it's going to be 24 to oh, – this hurts me – 13. Um, I, I think that the Chargers are, are going to, to, to beat the Cardinals. Yeah. There you I'm have sorry, it, boys. Mike. That was hard to watch, actually. <laughs> I know, Jake. You were like, you're like, man, these guys are gonna roll. And even Mike's like, man, I can't, I can't see it. That's, it's crazy. Yeah. Jake might be 34. the new czar, though. Jake, if Jake gets well, this right, yeah. man, we're gonna have to turn it over to him. Is knowing, yep. They went to Buffalo. They went to Buffalo. Put twenty eight up on the Bills. I think the Bills have a really good defense. They put forty one up on the Rams. The Rams defense is that good, but still forty one. That doesn't happen. They don't lose like that ever. Um, they were in that game against the Lions. They should have won. They abandoned the run. And I understand Lions stopped the run. That's why they paid Ali McNeil ungodly amounts of money, which was insane. Um, but that's why, because they stopped the run. Still, though, the Cardinals were running the football well, and they should have continued. They only ran like five times. With, like their leading rusher had five carries against the Packers. They let that nope. get out of hand. They need to have more of a balanced yeah. approach. And 100%. the thing that I think leads to that is you look at the commander's loss, right? 42 to 14. What happened the next week? They got up, they got prepared, they beat the 49ers on the road. I think these type of losses are how things actually get changed. Too many coaches around the league will lose a 20 to 13 game and say, yeah, we had our chances. You know, that's just football. We got to clean this up. We can, but just cleaning something up doesn't get it done. You have to actually go and dive into what went wrong I think they're going to do that, and that's why I'm that confident they're going to win against the Chargers in a game that probably nobody is going to watch because it's at 9 p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> well, from your list, that that goes to bad so for you like that, right? Mike, get you somebody that goes to bad for you the way Jake goes to bad for you. The Cardinals. <laughs> that was impressive. My wife doesn't even do that for me. So. I was going to say, I got you, Mike. Mine just tells me the Bills suck whenever they lose. I never get any. I never get any positive affirmations. That's incredible work right there. I need some more of that in my life. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in as always, folks. Much love to you for tuning in on the NFC West Roundtable tonight. On the way out the door, if you could, like button and subscribe button. You want to make sure to hit that because we will be recapping all of the games we just previewed next week, and we'd love to have you in for that one as well. And then on your way out the door, YouTube 150 is the promo code on BetUS. That'll get you a 150% sign-up bonus up to 2000 bucks on your first deposit and 125% bonus on your next two deposits after that. For Jake, Mike, Brandon, and Jesse, I'm your host, Zbot. Thanks so much for tuning in to the NFC West Roundtable, and we'll see you on the next one.